One of the last remaining secrets of magnetism, which thousands of people have been able to demonstrate, back to the time of Rawls and Davis, however, they didn't know that it was phase shift. They knew that one pole of a magnet drastically affected biological organisms more than the other pole. I have made countless videos of seed experimentations that uh, other people have duplicated. So we know that it exists, and I was the one that actually discovered the actual uh, phase shift um, as far as how it affects light on a, a coherent polarized mass, that which we call a magnet. Um, the last remaining discovery to be made as to why this phase shift exists, I actually discovered while on vacation, and like everything else uh, from Mother Nature, I'm going to use that term loosely, it had to be divinely simple. In other words, it was right there underneath my nose, ready to bite me in the ass, as it were. And uh, I discovered it. Um, like everything else in the universe that us uh, stupid, pathetic humans experience, we experience uh, incoherent mass. This table, you know, this computer, this microphone, other human beings, it's incoherent. You know, living tissue, rocks. Um, obviously, the Earth's core is certainly polarized. We have the magnetosphere of the Earth, but I'm talking about in general human experience. So, this would be a typical mass. We have incoherent matter, and so time is a constant bubble. Time is magnitude. Magnitude, 100% of all magnitude in the universe, from uh, the macro to the micro, on the atomic scale and up, obviously, is solely due to magnetism. Magnetism is literally the loss of inertia that defines force and motion, and that which defines magnitude. Time is nothing other than the measure of magnitudes, their passing, relationship, causal effects. This all gets into Maxwellian field equations. Very simple, well, not that simple, but simple, but the irreducible fact, and this is certainly not my discovery, but I'm the first person to actually say this because I've never read this in another book, that time and magnetism are one and the same thing. Now, magnetism actually is an entity. It follows the Hanway poincare model of projective geometry. But time is not a thing in and of itself. We can't speak of a shadow as something in and of itself. It is a privation of light. We can't speak of or reify an absence. We can't speak of emptiness as a something. We often talk about the emptiness, but we're talking about the emptiness of something in relationship to something else, like saying, Alaska is empty of palm trees. We cannot reify an absence. Time is like that. And that's certainly not my discovery. The ancient Greeks and the ancient Indians discovered that a long time ago. So this is t typical time as the human experiences it. Now... What well, was ready to bite me in the ass, and really the last remaining discovery, and it'd take a long time to actually explain, but I actually have an equation for this. I don't want to reveal that in this video. I'll leave that to the fourth edition of the book. Is that it was ready to bite me in the ass. Now, I knew that the phase shift occurred, as seen underneath the ferro cell, and certainly experienced. However, they didn't know it was a phase shift. It's typically called electromagnetic retardation. It's actually ascribed to relativity, but Einstein actually never describes that. We talk about increasing speed, decreasing time. We actually attribute all of that nonsense, not nonsense, we attribute that to the nonsense of Einstein, but uh, 1 over C squared, and those discoveries were actually made by Hanley Poincaré and by Nikola Tesla. They are not Einstein's discoveries, but they have nothing to do with relativity. You know, Mother Nature does not work off of math. I mean, it's simplex phase shift. So why is there a phase shift? On any and every coherent polarized mass, we actually end up with polarized time. All those countless experiments done by Rawls and Davis on worms and seed experiments and birds and animals and chickens and, you know, you, I mean, I proved it over and over again with countless experiments done on seed growth. Just seed exposure only radically changes the results. The alfalfa sprouts, uh, they grow radically different, they taste radically different, they smell radically different. Anybody and everybody can duplicate this experiment. I discovered underneath the ferro cell, as I've made countless videos, that there is a phase disparity that occurs at a rate of 1 over phi. Uh, we have compression on the south pole at a rate of 1.618033, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to 1. So we have 1 over phi phase shift, which basically is an egg shape. So we have a polarized phase shift on any coherent phenomenal entity, i.e. a magnet, for example. 
It actually encapsulates the entity like an egg. Actually, if you were to subdivide an egg evenly, the top or the pointy uh, part of the egg would be a rate of 1, and the bottom, the larger section, would be at a volume of phi. Well, we actually have a polarized time. It's actually affecting these worms, these seeds, these chickens. Now, Rawls and Davis had no idea that it was phase shift. They just knew, and, they, and I've got I've got their books. They didn't discover this. I mean, they just they they knew what was going on, and the experiments are easily reproducible. Um, they had no idea it was phase shift, and nobody had any idea that there was actually a, a polarized uh, phase shift on the magnet until I discovered it underneath the ferro cell. I even talked with the inventor of the ferro cell, Tim Vanderelli. And he said, yes, that I was the first person to discover that. I would have thought that he had, but uh, I'm the one that discovered that. Now, the explanation for that, obviously, is certainly left up to me. And I have discovered that. And it turns out, without getting into tremendous detail, the reason for this phase shift, since time only exists, of course, time is a privation, but it goes hand in hand with expansion, with magnitude. The reason why it exists at a phase disparity of 1 over phi is due to, and is ready to bite me in the ass the whole time, the lag due to geromagnetic precession, also called the Lamour frequency. In very, very short, without getting into tremendous detail and boring you with an equation, and the equation is divinely simple, is geromagnetic precession and the fact that it is a coherent entity operating with, okay, coherent entity, what is a magnet, by the way? the entire entity is operating in coherency. We have an incommensurability of the polarization of that mass. I mean, that's the only thing that differentiates out a magnet before it becomes a magnet to a millisecond after, after it gets stuck under the uh, magnetizer, that it actually becomes a magnet. We have an actual phase disparity of 1 over phi. Resultant to that, we have a polarization of time. We're not used to polarized time. This is how we normally experience time with incoherent. You know, the only coherent mass that human beings actually have experience with is the Earth's magnetosphere, and we're not able to experience that. However, birds are. Do the cryptochromes in their eyes are actually able to see the phase shift, and this is how they navigate. Now, we knew that birds navigated via magnetism, but we didn't know how. Birds cannot see magnetism. They cannot. What they're seeing is the effect of that polarized magnetic uh, field of the Earth's core as affected on light such that they are able to navigate via the effects of that magnetic polarization upon light entering the atmosphere. So, in the case of the magnet, we're actually able to polarize time. But what was the reason for this phase disparity? That was actually what was troubling me. And the last question has been answered. The reason for it is lag due to geomagnetic precession. Explaining that, however, would take, take a little bit longer. So divinely simple. So absolutely. You see, the reason for this, too, is something else that I've actually uh, illuminated at other points in time, but people don't get it. Mother Nature doesn't draw a line like this. She draws a line like this. But polarization, when it comes to projective geometry, you have to think in more than two dimensions. So polarization does not occur just like this. It occurs like this. Okay? Are you seeing this correctly? Not just like this, which is this, at a different angle, but also like this. Okay? It's actually hard to draw that out in a curved linear. It's hard to actually take both fingers in a curved linear fashion. So it's occurring in multiple dimensions of magnitude due to geomagnetic precession of the coherent polarized mass. This also, by the way, explains galactic jets emanating from black holes in distant galaxies, which actually rotate like the top of a compass of a gyroscope. That's the only... They eject actually countless trillions of tons of gaseous matter. What, ejected from a black hole? I thought nothing was supposed to escape a black hole. Well, we've actually seen these galactic jets, and we know that they occur at, a, uh, ang at an angle of ejection just like a, uh, a, uh, a gyroscopic top. That explains that. Um, it's so, so simple. It was ready to bite me in the ass the whole time, and there it is. I also discovered, and this is going to take a long time to explain, I can't discuss it here right now in such a, blunt, in such a short fashion, 
this would be like uh, low energy light. Let's say infrared, and this represents um, a blue light towards the ultraviolet. This starts going towards higher power, towards gamma rays and X rays. You notice this? You notice that the phase disparity is basically null, and it becomes the smaller it becomes, the higher the capacitance. Opposite of how humans think, the larger a box, the more it holds. When it comes to energy, the smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. When we're talking about like ultraviolet towards gamma. Now, when we're talking about infrared or basically low power of visible light, for example, or radio, we're talking about a phase disparity that exists. It would take me a really long time to actually illuminate how important this is, but basically this principle of geomagnetic precession and the principle of phase disparity applies to all electromagnetic radiation on the most simple terms. I know you think, well, this isn't that simple, but it really is. It, it, is, it applies to all electromagnetic radiation in the most simple terms that it's no more complicated than saying 1 and 1 equals 2. Everything ties together in such a simple fashion. The last link in uh, comprehending uh, a phase disparity and the reason for it exists due to phase lag, due to geomagnetic precession, or what is conventionally called uh, the Lamore frequency, is now completely understood. And there's an equation for that now. And uh, I will have that, so... Without getting into further detail and uh, taking up enormous amounts of your time, that is the answer to that. And yes, it is certainly my discovery. I love it when I mention things that nobody's ever talked about or ever written about, and then someone will actually leave me in comments like, you didn't discover that. I'm like, really? Go find me who else mentioned <laughs> Come and go find me somebody else that mentions that at some other point in time in any book or any article. They don't. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. Some of you might find that extremely dry and uninteresting. Some people will find it fascinating. All the more proof, however, that Mother Nature is far, far, far more simplex. I didn't say simple, I said simplex. Than even I thought possible. Divine simplicity, which only goes to say that human beings are by and large extremely stupid, and I count myself even amongst them because, you know, 44 years later, that's how long it took me to discover this stuff, and obviously with not the assistance of really anybody else, with the help of some people, but and their writings, like Dollard and Tesla and others. As the saying goes, you stand on the shoulders of giants to see further. So, thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.